Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 2 is currently airing on Netflix. We got the first 11 episodes. Russell Curry, Chance Perez, the Red and Black Dino Fury Rangers, respectively. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, guys. Uh, fantastic beginning of this first uh, second half of the season. Amazing job. I'm going to start right with you, Russell, because uh, something that we got in Power Rangers was a, was a pretty hard emotional scene that we got between your character and uh, Tarek. Um, I got to talk about that scene in particular because it actually really did move me. Uh, my daughter was almost on the verge of tears for a second. Um, oh, can you talk yeah. to me about that scene and what went into that scene and what you wanted to bring uh, to that scene that wasn't necessarily on the page? Man, well, first off, Joe, thank you so much, man. It's it's good to see you. Um, you always good to see you. Always good to talk to you. Uh, and hearing that that was the reaction to that scene just warms my heart so much. I, I was very nervous about that day. I was probably preparing for that multiple days in advance. Uh, and yeah, I, I personally am not a person that is drawn to anger very easily. Uh, Zato is the same way. And it was a lot of work of finding, you know, what is it that gets him to that point? What is it that, that really lights that fire for him to confront him and for him to confront Tarek in that way? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was a lot of work. Uh, I think I think Chance can remember that I was like, uh, don't talk to me. Sorry, I got to get in the zone. It's not personal. I still love you, man. Uh, so it was it was probably at that point, uh, one of the most challenging scenes I'd ever done. But man, to hear that that's the reaction, it, it all paid off, man. Oh, awesome. absolutely. Absolutely. I was I was look, I was quite surprised just by the depths of where the show went. Um, it's not something that we're used to seeing in a kid's show, let alone Power Rangers. But here we are, man. It feels like we're really taking uh, taking some of the governors off and going forward. Uh, Chance, same thing to you, mainly because in season one, there is an episode called Matchmaker, which is quite historic for many reasons. Um, it's an episode that I thought was handled extremely well, and it really made me proud in that moment, probably the most proud, I would say, to be a Power Ranger fan just in general. Uh, mm -hmm. It made a lot of steps uh, were taken forward on and with that episode specifically. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, because I, I got to really watch that with my little girl and experience that with her, which was really cool. So for you, what does that episode mean to you? I mean, I think I love how it was done, you know, because like, this is this is the real world and like people fall in love with whoever they want to fall in love with. And for that to be on the screen uh, for Power Rangers and for that show and like to introduce it to people um, who may have never even like thought of this concept and do it in such a way where it's not like in your face. It just happens naturally. Like I thought it was so beautifully done. And um, so it really, it really meant a lot like being a part of that. And um, I know it meant a lot like to the rest of the cast as well. And especially to Tessa who gets to play that role and bring that to the screen and bring that to life for so many individuals. Uh, yeah, it's very special. Yeah, absolutely. And I got it. I got to jump in Chance. You are so phenomenal in that episode, man. Oh, thank so you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You, you really uh, complimenting each other. Russell, I want to go back to that day. I like, yeah, he, he was like, yeah, seriously, don't talk to me. Like, <laughs> he's like, I, I love you, but not right now. And like, it was just, it was so powerful being there in that room, like watching Russell get into that mindset. Because like he said, Zato doesn't blow up like that. Yeah. And like Russell as a person is very kind and loving and gentle. And like, he's not an angry guy. And so to see that side come out, um, it was it was really powerful. Uh, so kudos to you, man. Well done. Well Thank done, you. absolutely. Thank and Russell, I have to ask you: Is there anything you personally wanted to add to Zato, uh, whether it be characteristic or story wise, that that wasn't in the original scripts? Uh, there were a lot of things that we came up with as time went on, um, and I think the humor aspect, like. Anything that's, well, not anything that's funny, but a lot of the, the things I'm most proud of that I got to craft together with uh, our writers and our directors and Simon as the time went on were Zato's really funny moments, in my opinion. So um, for instance, episode two, I'll just give you two, two quick ones. Episode two of season one, uh, when we're talking to Warden Garcia <clears throat> and he shows the, was this their vehicle? And he does the, the uh, drawing. It was mine and Charlie's idea for Zato to be like, no, that's not, that wasn't in the script. Um, so very, very proud of that. Uh, and also 
episode two of season two, when we were doing the table read, uh, we had the whole back and forth about um, uh, the wheelie joke, you know, uh, Ion oh, yeah. like, yeah, it'll be wheelie cool. <laughs> right. And and in the table read, I just was moved to say, be wheelie careful, which wasn't written in the script. And uh, they were they were gracious enough to say that, yeah, we can record that, Russell. Just keep yeah. keep goofing off. Why not? We'll, we'll reward you for Those it. table reads, we would always throw stuff like that in there. And like, if it got a laugh, they would usually write it in. And like, it was so yeah. cool, like working with them in that way. I love so that. So collaborative. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. amazing. You know, actually, I want to speak about that a little bit, mainly because since we're on the topic of scripts and writing, um, it's usually New Zealand writers writing for American actors. So with you guys uh, being American, do they kind of reference to you guys and say, you know what, this might not, th this is what I think it sounds like, but maybe does it sound right to you guys? Is that a, a way to help kind of inform your characters as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I uh, like I was saying in those table reads, and it's very collaborative. And something that they always did was uh, at the end of every single table read, would be like, "Is there anything that stood out that didn't quite like read as American? Like something that you guys wouldn't normally say?" And um, you know, that was something that we did every single table read. So it was really cool because they would always check with us and make sure you know, like that we were comfortable with those things that we'd be saying and that it read well to the audience. That's incredible. Now, Chance, uh, you join a small group of uh, ranger musicians uh, like okay. Kira from Dino Thunder or Antonio and Mia from Samurai. What's your favorite part of combining your two worlds uh, in Dino Fury and music? Uh, I think I think the instrumentation, like all the stuff that I got to play was so cool. Like, I don't know um, if this was discussed in anything, but like I have never played the bass before or like, you know, harmonica or guitar and even guitar like I've been playing guitar since I was in middle school but like I taught myself like acoustically and like chords and stuff like that so actually like shredding a solo never done before <laughs> so I had like that that moment where Zedo and I were on stage and he was handing me like all these different instruments I learned how to play all those solos like two weeks before we filmed it wow. so Big that was thing. something that was really fun and challenging for me as a musician like to be able to experience something like that so. Well, with with those solos, was that like added extra homework that you had to kind of figure out how to play those? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, because they, like I like uh, I think we mentioned earlier, we get like three episodes every two weeks. And um, so we got the episodes and they're like, yeah, you're playing a solo, but you're playing bass, you're playing guitar. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I got some studying to do. Man. You know, um, one thing that's very unique to the experience of Power Rangers, and I don't, I mean, I'm not sure if the general public really knows this, but we, Chase and I were talking, uh, Chance and I were talking about this a, a little bit earlier, is that you guys almost go through a, you guys go through a Power Ranger boot camp, but it's not just uh, learning action and stuff. By the end of this, you guys are well-versed in voice acting. You guys are well-versed on set and action uh, just in general. Nobody can tell me that Power Rangers aren't the hardest working actors in Hollywood. But <laughs> with, with all of that being said, um, especially with the voice acting side, is, th is there anything, whether you were in the booth that they wanted to keep in and they're like, you know what, that one works? Or has that opened up your passion at all for wanting to dive into more voice acting, or whether it be anime or voiceovers or anything like that? Um, and that one's for you, uh, Russell. Man, oh my gosh. Uh, you just, you hit on something I talked about all the time. I, I called the experience of shooting Power Rangers, Power Rangers University. I mean, yeah. we act, we we do stunts, we do special effects, we do ADR and voice acting. We we do, um, there's like pyrotechnics sometimes. Like it's, we do it all, man. I got hit in the face with, with shaving cream or with whipped cream. It's like, we do it all, man. And I'm so grateful for that experience. It's, it's so cool. And I think, being in the booth and hearing myself um, and seeing those episodes come together with my voice over the, that Red Ranger footage, I'm like, oh, we're doing more of this, man. This is, uh, we're yeah. just getting started over here. So yeah, very excited for, for that experience to carry over to the future. I mean, Chance, I, I mean, you're no stranger to, to a music booth, I mean, to a sound booth, but this, mm -hmm. this has to be a little bit different for you, right? A, a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was there's was definitely things that I had to uh, take into consideration after doing it for a little while is like when during season one and we did, were doing ADR, I would go all out 100 percent like, ah, ah, you know, all these things. And you're like, it really takes a toll on your voice if you're not like being careful. So like I, I like learned a little bit like of like developing that technique throughout season two. And I just I ended up having so much fun with it. And like Russell said, watching it back 
seeing your voice like on the screen like oh wow like that's how it came off like during the show like i don't know it's it there's a really cool um it's a really cool play there and uh I, it reminds me of um like you said doing more like stuff in the future like with anime and stuff how john johnny young bosch right does all that stuff for those different characters i'm like i would love to be able to explore that more in the future i mean i feel like it's it's such a power rangers is really good experience for figuring if you're in entertainment for figuring out what you want to do because there's so many different things you guys are getting thrown at doing that mm -hmm. you know you'll figure out what you want to do if, if it's something in entertainment um now chance this one's for you uh or both of you really when i spoke in the past to the beast morphers cast they told me uh that they were suggested to watch power rangers rtm or rpm was there any seasons that they uh recommended that you guys watch ahead of uh, your season uh not for, not for me okay yeah yeah not that i recall uh i i definitely went and did my homework and watched beast morphers on my own shout out to the beast morphers cast um uh yeah they were first off they were so awesome and just like shepherding us and and helping us along the the path because they were the last ones to do it before us mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i watched every episode of beast morphers just to see where the show was at most recently. So that's that's one thing that, that I took upon myself. It's yeah. amazing. They did um, a good job. Go ahead, what was that? I was just saying they did a great job. I was thinking back to that opening uh, scene with um, was, uh, Rory and like his dad and like going in the limo and like he, he just, he played that so well. And I think they all did such a great job with their characters. Absolutely. Now, um, some actors, they say, learn something about themselves through empty, empathy with the characters they play. Uh, what did you guys learn about portraying these characters? We'll start with you, Russell. What did you learn uh, about playing, about, what did you learn about yourself through playing Zyda, Zeta? I think learning a lot more about leadership. Uh, you know, I wasn't, I, I had been a person who had taken on leadership positions, I guess, in the past, but I didn't really see myself that way. I'm a, I'm a younger brother. I'm like the youngest in my family. So I never really saw myself that way. So I got to see how much of a leader I can be. And it was, uh, it was a great experience. I've, I've grown a lot from that alone. How about you, Chance? Um, I'd say that's something that Javi is not really afraid to do is, is like rise to the occasion and, and be courageous in the moments that he feels are necessary. And like in watching him do that and like in playing that in my character, it's allowed me like to kind of like speak up for myself a little bit more when I feel uncomfortable about something or like something's like, you know, making me a little anxious or whatever that I'm able to express that. Cause um, like sometimes it's easier just to be like, okay, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna let it pass, whatever. But like, it's it's good to speak up for yourself. And that's something that he taught me. Um, so you guys are the first season to really uh, break away from the traditional uh, television programming every weekly kind of thing. Uh, Dino Fury is on Netflix. It's streaming uh, first eleven se first eleven episodes, and I'll be honest with you, it, it's 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 a faster experience, but it's a more gratifying and rewarding one, um, especially as you're binging it through. And and uh, believe me, having a six year old just being able to fly through the episodes <laughs> and then watch them back, there's a huge benefit in that. Um, can you talk to me about the benefit benefits of Power Rangers Dino Fury being on Netflix now? Um, and that's for either one of you. Wait. I think the, the name recognition is kind of cool. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> where, where is it again? On what? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I tell when people find out, like when I get to tell them, like, oh yeah, Power Rangers, no big deal. And then they're like, where can I watch it? I say, Netflix. It's pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> I mean, it is a nice little flex there. It's like, hey, we're, we're streaming on Netflix, you know? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, now, let me ask you this, because this season, too, uh, or the, the second season of Power Rangers Dino Fury, um, you guys really, you know, you guys really take the governor off of the action. The action is off the charts, and it really seems like there's, there's a lot more uh, just big action sequences. Can you talk to me about um, step, season two stepping its game up for the action side of things? Uh, that, that one's for you, Chance. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, are you shaking your head, Russell? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, it's so much, it's so oh, crazy. Oh, you're like, don't spoil anything. Oh, <laughs> no, no, you, you're, um, you're pros, we got this. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, like you said it really well, like the, the action really ramps up and, 
And something that we were talking about, like with the action, uh, and this is kind of like backpedaling to season one, but uh, Zed coming into it, like you see a lot more action from him than you have in any of the previous Power Rangers. Like, Absolutely. He's zapped people before or like turned them into, you know, whatever. But like here you get to see him in hand to hand combat, like punch somebody up into the sky and then knock him across the field. And like, it's those kinds of things that really like, I don't like take you back for a second. You're like, whoa, this is really intense. Like it's, it's cool seeing that. And it gets yeah. oh, way, man. way crazy uh, in season two. Uh, Power Rangers Dino Fury. It seems like it's used less and less of its uh, predecessor film from Ryu Soldier. Uh, do you think that that Power Rangers is moving in a direction now where they can do more and more uh, either uh, in-house Hasbro production rather than relying so much on the uh, Super Sentai? And that's for you, Russell. I'm so sorry. Uh, my you didn't audio hear anything I said. That. I caught the very end of that. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, I was just saying that in Power Rangers Dino Fury, it seemed Simon Bennett uh, went on to say that you guys use less and less footage uh, than the, your prede predecessors before you with the Super Sentai footage. Do you think that, especially with uh, being on Netflix now, do you think we're getting into an area where we're becoming less reliant on the Super Sentai footage and uh, really, you know, 30 years of creativity uh, put into, uh, you know, Power Rangers standing on its own without the Super Sentai? Yeah, it's definitely the direction that we headed with season two, especially. Uh, it's really, really great to see our amazing stunt team just make everything their own um and create these amazing action sequences uh and we have a really cool mix because our our second unit directors we had uh we had yuji who's been on power rangers since day one which being on set with him and with a legend who created something that i loved growing up is like oh my gosh yuji san <laughs> uh so amazing and then we have kenji who is brand new to power rangers it's his very first time and he brings like this freshness and all yeah. these crazy things that I'm just like, how did you think of that? So, yeah, um, yeah it's great to just see those guys shine and, and our entire stunt team and stunt performers shine and, and make it their own. If I may, um, Kenji on the, like it was like during the first week of us doing the training. Like I remember him, okay, like you're gonna, uh, and then you're gonna punch him in the stomach. I'm like, okay, really punch him. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, punch him as hard as you can. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, they're stunned up. Or like, they're like stunned men. Do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I hit him really hard. And he's like, oh, okay. Man. And I'm, he's like, I want to create a new kind of ranger. I'm like, what do you mean by that? I want the intensity to be shaking your hands. <sighs> and like, just like, see, I'm getting really into it. But like, just like seeing him like, so passionate about what the what he wants these rangers to be and like what he wants them to embody like i knew it was gonna be something special from the jump that's crazy yeah there's this scene with zato that's running on the rooftops and i was like whoa like this is this is something new i haven't seen something like this in, in, in a long time power rangers so that was pretty cool um i do have a question we'll start with you chance on this one and then we'll go to you russell uh i don't know have you guys finished adr yet first for for uh season two yes okay um Yes. Now, I know usually uh, ADR takes place after after the filming. Uh, has there been a point yet what, when you finished up your ADR from the second season and you ha let it sink in uh, that, you know what? Like, I'm like Dino Fury is essentially done. Like, I'm, I'm done with this for now. Has that sunk in for you yet? Yeah, uh, um, it was a sad day, man. It was a really, it was a tough moment to to be there and and just uh know that it was my last time going into that booth but it was it was bittersweet at the same time and you know i i'm so proud of what we did it, that was really what came over me the most how about yeah. you chance I'm, I'm right there with russell like yeah. it was you know so much fun everything about it there was no there was no bad moments uh, for power rangers like we had just the most wonderful time yeah, Look, seriously. you guys shot this, uh, well, it, it was really airing, and you guys shot this kind of before this pandemic was going on, and I guess even kind of into it in New Zealand. Um, it's a snapshot. It's really a snapshot of what the world was going through, especially uh, with your unique experience being in Power Rangers. What's the biggest thing you're going to be taking away uh, from your experience in New Zealand, the state of the world, and doing this show that's been going on for almost 30 years now? That's a tough question to ask to answer, Joe. Oh my gosh! Uh, I, the main thing that sticks out to me is that 
I tell people all the time, you know, we were there from September of 2020, just like the height of, of uh, COVID pandemic up until June of 2021, when things started to normalize a little bit back home. And New Zealand, we barely had to think about COVID out there. And I say all the time that um, the five of us Rangers that traveled there, because Tessa already lived there, <laughs> uh, the five of us Rangers that traveled from the States to New Zealand are five of the luckiest people on the entire face of the planet. And um, yeah, that's something I, I'm never going to forget that. That's just the craziest thing to think about. Absolutely. It's something that we never took for granted. And we would talk about like every other day or every other week, just like how precious those moments were to be there in with the world and the state that it was in. So yeah, we're very grateful. Uh, Russell, Simon Bennett uh, directed the last two episodes of Power Rangers Dino Fury season <laughs> two. Uh, two questions I have for you. One, can you talk to me about working with him as a collaborator? And two, what does his directing style add to Power Rangers? Oh man, oh, I cannot say enough amazing things about Simon Bennett. Oh my gosh, I I am so grateful to him for putting this together, for bringing us all together and, and just being such a visionary for this show. Uh, he wasn't originally going to direct any episodes. So uh, he's, he's a legendary director in New Zealand. Um, for anybody who has not seen his previous work, go look it up. He directed episodes on Power Rangers already um, before becoming the showrunner for our, our show. And, you know, I, it was such a privilege to get to work with him at all because he, he is such an incredible director. And him being on set as a director, he just has such a patience, um, but that vision and he knows exactly how to communicate with actors because he went to drama school himself. He's a very like actor centric uh, type of creator. And he knew exactly how to communicate with us the best way possible. And man, he just, it's, it's an inspiration to be around that guy. I, like I said, I can't say enough good things about him. It's amazing. Chance, did you want to add anything to that? I think Russell said it all. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I talk so much. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Look. <laughs> We're on the precipice of the 30th anniversary of, of, of this iconic show that's, that's obviously gone on for 30 years. Um, there's so many rumors swirling around what could be happening, what might be happening, who could be coming back, who might be coming back. But let's take all that away. Uh, what are the chances that you guys would want to reprise your roles of Zeta and, and Javi for the 30th anniversary? Uh, you know, because we've already had one giant epic dino team up with uh, the Mighty Morphin Rangers, the Dino Charge Rangers, the Dino Thunder Rangers. It just seems to me that the Dino Fury Rangers, you know, they should be a part of that too, right? 30, 30 years? I don't disagree with you. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're asking if we would want to do this again, I mean, no questions asked. Who wouldn't want to keep being a Power Ranger? That's That's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many rumors. There's so much out there. We have no idea, but, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just wait and see, man. Well, you guys good to answer a couple uh, Twitter questions real quick. Absolutely. Sure. All right. So we got a Robert, Robert Amaya 91 on Twitter. He asks, what can we expect from the second half of season two? Uh, either one of you guys. Go ahead, Chance. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you can expect a lot of character growth, a lot of uh, definitely a lot of action for sure. Um, and like some situations that you wouldn't quite expect that teaches our Rangers some lessons that, um, you know, puts them in, in situations where they got to grow up in different ways that you didn't see coming. Uh, so it's, it's really, it's really um, something to watch for sure. <laughs> uh, we have another one from Twitter, uh, Firefight or Fighting Fire on Twitter asks, what's your favorite, what was your favorite thing to shoot, uh, whether it was solo or with your fellow Rangers? And then that one will be for you, Russell. Ooh. Um, I think our first morph sequence with all six of us was really cool. Um, gosh, there's so many, there's so many things. It's really impossible to choose. I, I think um, our last episode was probably my favorite thing to shoot overall, because yeah, we just, I mean, I can't say anything else about it, but um, the way everything comes together is is pretty great. I love it. Uh, Tara Keep asks, if you could team up with any past Ranger, who would you choose? Uh, we'll go to you, Russell. I want to say Jason and Tommy. Let's bring them both back. 
um yeah we're talking about a, a dino team up like yeah that would be that would be epic yeah also all red rangers at some point in in your power ranger queer uh and the last question came from alan clifford he says uh this one's for you chance what impact has power rangers had on your life the most oh wow um i think something that it taught me as a kid was um that like that, that classic saying that first you don't succeed then try try again you know and power rangers like it, it really embodies that and like they don't always succeed the first time but they never give up and that was something that it taught me when i was a child so probably that guys power rangers dino fury is airing currently right now on netflix season one and the first half, half of season two i can't wait for season uh the second half of season two uh, i was telling chance earlier there's so many cliffhangers that need to be addressed I yeah. want to see where this goes. And believe me, my six-year-old wants to know even more. Trust me. <laughs> but guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, guys. Pleasure. Thank you so much. You. Always a pleasure, Joe. Thanks, Have a Dad. good one. <laughs>